Hey guys, Tony from Demore Engineering. Welcome to another episode of Here in My Lab. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Here in My Lab. Today we're going to be talking about the top eight customer service concerns that we get of somebody using a DD-1 for the first time. Stay tuned. A common customer service concern on the DD-1 is getting no signal. There's a number of reasons why you may be experiencing this. Let's start with the first one. Number eight, test harness. If you'd like to test your DD-1 leads to make sure that they are working properly, all you need is a simple uh, digital volt ohmmeter like this fluke here. This one is maybe a little bit more than basic, but any of these will, will do the job just fine for this test. Put your meter on the ohms setting, not the continuity setting. The continuity setting tells you if something is connected, but doesn't really tell you much about the quality of that connection. and Maybe that's something that we can discuss in, a, in another video. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you guys would like a video on using a DVOM. But uh, for now, we're going to test this DD1 harness to make sure that it is in proper working order. So we've got our meter set to ohms, got the probes from the uh, test meter here, plugged in to the common and to the ohms connector. And we're just going to measure from the black the black DD1 probe to the shield of the RCA like so. 0.4 ohms, so that's great. Anything less than 10, I would say is good. There's no real current going through these, so uh, that one's great. And then we're gonna test from the red DD1 probe to the tip of the RCA. There we go. Again, less than 10 ohms, so this harness is in great condition should be it's brand new but uh, if it wasn't and you've read more than 10 ohms on one of those measurements these are made to be field serviceable you can just open this up unscrew it and you can inspect the solder joints in here and resolder them if you find a problem there these are uh, made to be that way or you can just go to our website and order a new one the last test would be to make sure that the uh, DD1 probes are not shorted inside so Take our meter leads, one to the red, one to the black here, and just make sure it says uh, open like this. So that OL means overload, which means it's more than, it's higher than the meter can read, so it's, it's open. There is no connection between this and this, so that's exactly what we want. Number seven, remote level control. Turn that thing all the way up before you start the DD1 process. The remote level control doesn't actually add any, doesn't boost the level at all, it only reduces the level. So if you turn it all the way up, you're basically at zero, that's where it needs to be. A caveat to that would be if you wanted to leave yourself some room, maybe you're not sure if you want to set the 5 dB overlap or the 10 dB overlap, you could back the level control down to maybe somewhere around here. And then go ahead and set your 5 dB overlap track. And what that would do is, if you were listening to a track that was recorded a little bit lower, it would give you a few dB extra gain once you're set up. Next reason you may not get signal on your DD1. Number six, the amplifier gain circuit was designed by a bonehead. The amplifier gain circuit is supposed to have some gain here and a lot more gain over here. But somewhere along the way, somebody's design got out there and has been mass produced many a times in many different uh, shapes and sizes. 
And actually, when you turn the gain all the way down, which is one of the first steps to using the DD1, it's actually off. There's no gain. It's actually completely muted here. How do I know if your amp is like that? I don't know. Some amps are like that. Some are not. It's horrible. What I could, would suggest doing is instead of turning it all the way down to start, maybe turn your gain to here. That way it'll pass signal and you can complete the process of setting your gain properly with the DD1. Number five, crossover setting. If you're setting the low pass amplifier, your subwoofer amplifier, you have to make sure that the crossover is turned, if it's a low pass crossover that's turned all the way up to its maximum frequency over here because we're gonna be playing over here at 40 hertz. We wanna make sure that all that can get through the amplifier. We don't wanna start filtering that out. So you have to look for crossovers in the amplifier and also in the head unit. Make sure that if you're setting the subwoofer amplifier that the head unit, if there's a crossover for the subwoofer, it's adjusted out of the way above the frequency of 40 hertz that we're using to uh, set up the amplifier. If it's a full range amplifier and we're setting it you know, at one kilohertz, same thing, make sure the crossover is off. Or um, if it's a head unit, make sure that, there's, uh, that those crossovers are off as well. Number four, not enough output. Sometimes if you're using the DD1 and you're plugging your head unit straight into the RCA, instead of using the harness and measuring at the amplifier, it's possible that the head unit doesn't have enough output to light up both of the lights. The green signal LED needs about 700 to 800 millivolts RMS AC to illuminate. The blue 40 hertz or 1K detected LEDs need about 1.2 to 1.5 volts RMS before those will illuminate. So, so I know your head unit might say 3 volts or 4 volts or 5 volts output or something, but they leave headroom in those things sometimes so that you can use the base control or other things that boost up the signal. So if it's all flat, it's possible that your head unit may only put out a volt, in which case this wouldn't light up or you know, less than, if it puts out less than this, this isn't gonna light up. So I don't recommend plugging the head unit straight in to the DD1. It could be confusing. So I recommend using this harness and leaving it at the end of the chain of the gain train, which is the amplifier for the entire process. That would be for setting the head unit, setting any processors in the way, and then finally setting the amplifier. Just leave this at the amplifier the whole time. If you wanna go and watch my to more engineering university video number seven game. Number three, your amplifier is in full range. If you're using the DD1 and you have the harness plugged into the amplifier at the end, and you're doing the first steps where you're measuring the head unit, looking for the distortion, and you're looking for the maximum head unit volume setting, you start at 40 hertz with the zero dB track and you say, okay, I turned the volume at volume 35, I get distortion, and then you go to one kilohertz and you try to find it there and you get no signal. I've seen this happen a lot, I've answered a lot of these questions. This is gonna happen if your amplifier is in full range. You can't look at the output of a subwoofer amplifier and expect to get any one kilohertz out. It simply isn't gonna do it. Uh, or it'll give you very little and maybe enough to, to light up the signal LED, maybe enough to light up the one kilohertz detect LED even, but not enough to clip. So you can't do this, but why would you want to? Because if it's a subwoofer amplifier, then this 40 hertz is what you're worried about. If you're going to set up your another amplifier for your mids and highs, that's when you need to worry about the one kilohertz. If you're using the head unit power to run your mids and highs, then you could plug the DD1 into one of your factory speakers if you can get to the speaker wires and you could check when the head unit distorts there. But other than that, you wouldn't want to do it. You would just want this when you're using a full range amplifier or a mids and highs amp and this on a subwoofer amplifier. Number two, bass boost and EQ. And for this, I'm talking about the type of bass boost controls that are actually in EQ, either the one on the amplifier 
or some uh, like Rockford Fosgate, their remote is actually a, an EQ, or maybe the head unit has like a bass boost function, any kind of EQ, bass boost, bass control, treble control, or EQ controls need to be either flat or if you think it's gonna end up being uh, at the very end tuned where there's some you know fairly aggressive EQing then I would I would do the whole process with the EQ where you think it will be now this isn't to be confused with the remote level control like number the reason number seven if you rewind this uh, that's a different thing because that's actually a level control that needs to be all the way up this is EQ so set it where you think it's going to be set or where the customer is going to have it before you start any of your DD1 process and you'll be golden. And the number one most common question is what do I do if I have a processor or other things in the signal path between the head unit and the amplifier? I call this the gain train. If there's gain in stages down the line, they all need to be set sequentially. I recommend going to the Demore Engineering University video number seven. At the end, I'll put a link in this description and uh, an approximate time of where it starts. You don't have to sit through the whole thing because it's long. And you can learn how to set the game properly from front to back, no matter how many obstacles or processors are in the path.